Hello fellow art lovers, and I'm assuming that you are here because you are an art lover. Whether you are just getting started, whether you are super talented, or whether you just love art. I honestly don't think I'm the greatest at art, I just love it. Um, and I love learning new styles of art, and it just brings me joy and relaxation. So today I want to talk about painting for the Talking, let's talk first. Today, I wanna to talk about painting for relaxation's sake. <laughs> for relaxation's sake. For some reason, that was hard to say. Um, I have dabbled with all different kinds of painting and mediums. I did oil painting a long time ago. I've done a ton of acrylic stuff. Um, I've been painting a mural in acrylic on my son's wall. But watercolor for me is um, the newest medium to my life. So, um, I started painting in 2020. I started, excuse me, I started watercoloring in 2020. As I've come to discover, a lot of people did. I wonder why. What happened in 2020 that caused everybody to start painting? Anyways, so obviously 2020 was a very stressful time for the entire world and a lot of people turned to watercolor. Why is that? I personally think from my experience with it is it's so freeing and relaxing. Now, I have seen people in my life who really want to watercolor and they want to find it relaxing and they try and then they get frustrated. Why is that? I think it's because the approach is different. I think it's all about why you're painting, what your approach to painting is, and then um, the thing that you're actually painting. So let me explain. So for me, I am a extreme perfectionist in a lot of ways. Um, obviously not in the cleanliness of my house because there's stuff everywhere. <laughs> Definitely an artist type in that sense. I mean, my desk has stuff everywhere. But I'm a perfectionist in a lot of the things that I do. I'm a professional photographer. I love to learn things. I if it's creative, I do it. I crochet, I sew. If there's something I haven't done, I learn how to do it. Um, I even made journals and book binding and like, I just, I have this like creative energy that I just have to learn how to do things. Well, I went off on a tangent. Where was I going? Perfectionism. Okay. So I feel like for me, in a lot of the things that I do, it has to be perfect and it has to be done a certain way. With watercolor, I feel like it freed me from that perfectionism. I'm gonna say a statement here, and this is, can absolutely not be true, but for me, like acrylic, you put it down, you know where it goes, you blend it, it does what you tell it to, but watercolor is so freeing because it does what it wants to do, when it wants to do it, you just put your brush down and you watch, and you, you have control, but you don't have as much control over this medium as you do other ones. And for me, I found that freeing because it's gonna do what it wants. And so I don't need to try to make it perfect. I hope this makes sense. And yes, you can definitely use watercolor in a painting style that is super detailed and you place and you glaze and you do it exactly. But for me, the freeness of watercolor is just the wildness of the medium, the what it, let it dance on the page, let it spread, let it do what it wants to do. So today we're gonna to talk about how to start in watercolors and feel relaxed. There's no reason to be tense, there's no reason to get frustrated. I know that with some people who struggle with perfection, perfectionism, uh, it can be a little difficult to let that go, but for some reason, watercolors in particular I've been able to let that go. I'm not gonna be like, you do this, this, this to relax while painting. I'm just gonna give some tips. I'm just going to um, tell you things that might help in your watercolor painting journey that um, will make it less stressful if you're finding it stressful, make it more freeing and make it just an escape, a relaxation. Um, yeah, so let's, let's get into this. Okay, all right, first up, one thing, Hold on, let's turn this stool. I need somewhere for my foot to sit. One of the number one things that I think most people can find frustrating with watercolors, you're not using it right. 
Now, I'm not saying there's a right and a wrong way to do watercolor because you can do watercolor so many different ways, but I think a lot of people approach it, if you've painted in other mediums, you approach it like acrylic. You expect it to behave like acrylic. You get a ton of pigment on your brush because you want it to look like acrylic when you're putting it on your brush and when it's on the palette, you think it needs to be that thick. Watercolor is not acrylic. That is the first thing right away that will help you relax, <laughs> okay? Second thing, I want you to go into it with a mindset of if this particular painting or exercise or just blobs on a paper does not turn out the way you thought it would or should, it's okay. Get another piece of paper. It's fine. Get some cheap paper to practice on. You don't have to use 100% cotton paper in the beginning to do your practicing and get familiar with it and Yes, it will behave differently on 100% cotton. It will blend differently, it will move differently, but get to know the medium before you get stressed out over whether you should waste this piece of paper or not, okay? And there are cheaper, like this is bee paper in 100% cotton bee paper. Um, you can get a pack of 50 of these for very inexpensive. Um, or you can get the, where is it? It's somewhere around here. The five below paper that I reviewed. Try that, start with that, just start practicing. Okay, so be okay with it not being okay. Be okay with it not being okay, yes. All right, next. Um, when I sit down to start painting for relaxation's sake, this is gonna be an interesting video. I can't say that whatsoever. Sometimes I just want to watch the colors dance on the page. So start with that. Get a piece of paper just to swatch and play and just play with the color with no intentions whatsoever of making a grand masterful painting. Just play with the color. It's so relaxing to me to just watch the color dance and then like introduce other colors into it and as they bleed and just practice brush strokes with colors. Just relax, don't go into that expecting this to be something you're going to hang on your wall. Okay, next. Sometimes you just need to doodle paint, okay? And honestly, I sat down with my mother-in-law this past weekend. Honestly, not everything that you put on the paper is going to work out. And sometimes you just need an entire sheet of paper, or several as I have here, where you're just playing around and then sometimes you stumble upon something you did that you're like, oh my gosh, that's so fun, and you get excited. Um, where did that go? Okay, so here's a couple. We were testing out this like rag paper that she bought. We wanted to see what it was all about. And none of this is, it's just a blob of flowers, okay? But I was just trying out different paints and the paper and it's just a relaxing process just to, paint with no expectation. Here's some other things. We were just painting random little things and trying different techniques. I was showing her um, Tammy Kay's YouTube channel and um, I was showing her her style of florals and it's not at all the style that I do but I love, like I'm intrigued by it. And so I was kind of showing my mother-in-law um, a little bit of that style. And again, just putting random stuff on a page. And then I painted some donuts because I thought they were cute. Um, I actually have, I don't know where I put it, but there's like this, I painted this big pink donut with sprinkles and I thought it was precious. Um, and my mother-in-law is like, I want that. <laughs> so just paint, just doodle, relax. Throw on some music, throw on your favorite TV show and just play with the color. Now, we've played, we have um, tried out different techniques. Now we're gonna actually paint something. How do you relax when it comes to actually painting something that you are expecting to look good? I think this is where a lot of people get like freezed up. Get like freezed up. Man, my English is good. Here's a couple things. One, always use a reference photo in the beginning. I always use a reference photo um, when I started out because it gives you something to keep referring to and so um, it's not gonna look exactly like it. You're not trying to copy the photo, but it gives you a guide. If you're just trying to go off of memory of what a bear looks like when you're trying to paint, 
Um, if you're not used to drawing and you're not used to painting, that's probably not going to turn out like you expected. It could, it could, um, but have something up to constantly be looking back at too. Another thing you could do to relax and paint something amazing. Follow a step-by-step -step tutorial. There are so many on YouTube here. There's so many uh, florals, animals, different things. Find whatever it is you like to look at, what paintings you like best, and follow a step-by-step -step tutorial. It'll take a little bit of the pressure off of knowing what step to do next, but going into the step-by-step -step tutorial, know one thing, it will not look exactly like theirs. Everybody paints in their own unique style. And even if you're trying to copy exactly what they're doing, watercolor does what it wants. Remember that even if I try to paint the same thing twice, it's never ever gonna look exactly the same. Follow a step-by-step -step tutorial, take some breaths, just paint and know that it's not gonna look exactly like theirs. It could look better. It could look better than theirs. Should we paint in this video? I feel like we should get to some, get to some painting uh, because I don't want you just sitting here looking at my face. So we're gonna paint something. We're gonna relax, we're gonna paint something. I'm gonna show you doing some of these techniques, but let's do a step-by-step -step tutorial because we wanna relax. So I'll probably I'll put the music while I talk. I don't know. Don't be too precious about your supplies, but grab your favorite things and let's start painting something. I honestly have no idea what we're gonna paint yet. We're gonna sit down and I'm gonna look for some inspiration and we'll do a step-by-step -step tutorial. I'm gonna show you, I'll be using reference, I can't talk today. I'm gonna be using a reference photo, so I will show you that. We're gonna look up some inspiration, find something that will help us to relax, paint, make it simple. So let's get to some painting. Let's, let's get to this relaxing medium that we call watercolor. Are you relaxed yet? You should be relaxed. Let's go. So we're gonna move all this, again, just randomness to the side. Oh, this, again, this turned out looking horrible, but I ended up putting blobs of color and then blew on it with a straw. <laughs> again, have fun. Okay, so we're gonna do a couple things. I'm gonna have two papers. These are my last two from that B paper set. Okay, so this first one, just to get in the mindset of relaxation and um, painting for relaxation's sake, um, we are going to start by playing with some color and just putting it on the page. So I'm gonna take this palette right here, which has a mixture of Daniel Smith and Windsor, wait, hold on, shoot, Daniel Smith and Windsor and Newton and one Holbein. Um, and I am just going to play with color. Let's see here. I'm going to get a big old brush. This is my size 12 master's touch. Um, I really want to know what Hobby Lobby is doing with their masters and fine touch line. They've drastically put everything on sale. So if you're wanting something from this, get it now. I wonder if they're like rebranding or re, um, doing their logos or something because it's like all on sale. Okay, first, I'm actually just dripping water on my page. I made it a little bit darker so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, I'm literally just splashing water on my page. Um, and then I'm gonna take this opera pink. Um, let's get a bunch of this opera pink. Oh, hold on, sorry. I gotta take the autofocus off. I will one day get this down, okay. Here we go. And I'm just gonna dab this color around where there's water. And I am just playing with color right now. This is just an exercise just to play around with color. I need a paper towel, where are you? Okay, now I wanna take, hmm, what is this color? Oh, this is like the indigo, I think. Mm, okay, now I am just going in with a very wet indigo and I'm just gonna swirl this around the page. I just wanna see the color move and do whatever it wants. I'm gonna drop some water droplets on it. 
just play with that, see what it does as that dries. It's gonna have these beautiful little blooms, okay? Um, another thing that you can do with something like this, so you can come back later and turn this into something. You can have this as a background and paint something on top of it. Um, there's so many things you can do with just playing around with color. My last video that I did was um, using masking fluid. And this could be a very fun technique and just again, relaxing background to paint. So you paint on your masking fluid first, and then you just play with color for the background and then take that masking fluid off and paint those flowers. But just playing with color, moving it around. It's a very fun, calming experience for me. One of my favorite things, um, see these blooms that those water drops left? Let's do a couple over here. One of my favorite things to do um, a lot of times, especially like at the end of a painting, but um, even when you have like wet painting like now, um, I love to splatter paint. Uh, let's see. I also love mixing colors. I still wanna do a color mixing video so if you are interested in that, please let me know. Um, it's probably gonna be a very long video because I wanna talk about color theory just a little bit and go into mixing. But now we're gonna just splatter this color on top of these other colors and just watch them interact. Get a little bit of the pink and do the same. Okay. So now that I've played with color, I've gotten my hands used to using a brush, we're gonna move this aside and we are gonna start painting. And this is gonna be super simple and very relaxing. All right, so let's start painting. My relaxing painting is gonna be this. I don't know what kind of flower this is, but it's so beautiful. There's a couple reasons I wanted to use this. One, I wanna do just one giant flower on a page. I feel like that it's gonna be so much fun. But also, around the flower, we can do a fun background. One thing I love about this flower is, um, this is kind of contradictory to what I've been saying about um, perfectionism, but it looks so perfect. It looks so perfect and symmetrical, but, whoops, I'm hitting the microphone. But when we paint it, it doesn't need to look this perfect, okay? We're gonna paint this, gonna be very easy, I promise. We're just, just go with me here. All right, so there's my reference. I've never painted this flower, and um, if this goes horribly, I'm very sorry. Again, that's okay. I'm not painting this to put it on my wall right now. A lot of times when I am painting something either for commission or for um, to put up somewhere, I honestly do several versions of it. Okay, so I'm going to put this in the center-ish. Do I want to do... Yeah, I want to do... Um, horizontal. Okay, so I'm gonna start with just a yellow circle. That's not perfectly in the middle, but that's okay. Okay, and it doesn't need to be a perfect circle. I want it kind of jaggedy a little bit. I'm gonna take a little bit of, um, I'm gonna get my Daniel Smith paints out. I'm more familiar with where the colors are. As you can tell, I've used this. Okay, so. <laughs> Let's get a little bit of a brown. Um, and a little bit of that Quinn Gold. Okay, so I'm gonna take a little bit of this and just tap it along the outside of that. And again, tap it and let it go. Um, oh, let that do its thing. All right, so now we're gonna do the petals. This is a white flower. Look how off-center that is. 
So these are white petals. So to paint white petals, we basically are just doing shadows in gray. So we're going to take a very, very light wash. Um, and I think I want to use a Payne's gray. Let's see. Okay. Let me clean this little spot here. So I'm taking a little bit of Payne's gray and normally I paint with a much smaller brush, but since we have such a big flower, we're going to keep with this giant brush. I'll move to the smaller one when we get to details. Okay. So a very, very watered down Payne's gray. And then I'm going to tap the side of my brush on the paper towel to remove any excess. Mm, let's see. Ah, I just splattered it everywhere. Man, I'm so good at this. Okay. So this is still wet. So if I touch this, it will bleed and I'm okay with that. I really kind of want that. So I'm going to start with a petal shape here and the edges of these petals are very jaggedy, jaggedy, jack. Is that the right? How would you, how would you word that? Um, but they also go up in the middle a little bit. So let's, let's refine that a little bit. Okay. So there is petal number one. And then we're going to repeat the process around. I think I'm going to do one, two, three, four, cause this is, it's like a cross and then a cross. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, and then layer the other ones on top. So I'm going to go straight out this side. Let's turn my paper. And we're going to just do the same thing. We're going to go in up in the middle and back here. All right, going to go across here. Pretty. Good. If you notice, I am leaving like some white spaces within those petals as well. Don't have to fill it in all perfectly. <laughs> I keep going back to that word. Doesn't need to be perfect. See, just doing the shape of this, just kind of squig squiggling my brush around, making it a little higher in the middle of the petal. Pretty. Okay, so now I'm going to fill in the spaces. Well, that was my voice cracked a little. So I'm going to start here. I feel like I'm running out of water. Let's get a little bit more mixed up here. Okay. Pretty. Love it. Just wiggling that brush around. Those kind of melted into each other because that was still wet, but it's fine. We are going to put on details once this dries. So it'll help define those petals a little bit better. There's like no pigment on this. It's almost just straight water. Put a little bit more here. Pretty. Okay, and the last one. Got a little bit of yellow there. Again, totally fine. Gorgeous. When you're doing florals, you can do a looser style or more detailed style, but either way, you kind of start the same. So this is kind of like your base what you would do. If you wanted to do more and more details, you just add more and more layers of detail. So the middle, you just add more and more of those 
look at that, of those details. We are gonna keep it loose today, but we are gonna put a little bit of shadowing on our petals and we're gonna do a background because I want this flower to pop and I want us to have fun playing in the background. So um, this is still slightly damp. So let's see here. We are gonna start putting on details on some of these that are a little bit more dry. So I'm taking my cat's tongue. This is just um, a brush from Christy Rice's, from Christy Rice. It's the um, number one cat's tongue. So I'm gonna take that Payne's Gray and I'm gonna get a little bit more saturation on this. I don't want it to be like all the way saturated, but about like that. And then I'm going to tap the side of my brush so I don't have too much. And we're gonna go in on a dry petal and start putting in lines on these. So let's turn it to the side. This one looks dry to me. So we're gonna start, just put a few, okay. I don't like that. I need a different brush. So look at this. It's like it didn't happen. Um, so I'm gonna take a small round brush instead. And this is the Fine Touch number four round. So let's go into that Payne's Gray. And let's see here. All right, so I'm just gonna take the very tip of this brush and I'm going to paint some very faint lines. If you go where you have, sorry, I was not by the microphone. If you go where you have dips in the petals, go from here, let me zoom in. Go from that little dip and come in. And always keep it curved with your petal. But just do some very faint detailing lines. And we're just gonna do this through all the petals. Right, so I did some faint lines all over this. Um, I think I wanna leave the center. I was gonna put more detail in the center, but I think I wanna leave it. Um, so to give this just a little bit more dimension, I'm going to take a little bit darker of the Payne's Gray. So the more you layer um, and detail and deepen different things, the more, I'm gonna say realistic, but the more realistic it will sound. Will sound, well, I just read the word sound. We'll look. So we're gonna take just a little bit darker of that and just put some of it close to this base so it looks like it's going in. Why does this camera overheat just in this room? Sorry, that's not relaxing. Strike that. <laughs> Okay, so that gave it just a little bit more dimension. So I'm gonna let this dry completely and then we are gonna play with some background. So I let my camera cool down, it was overheating and this is now dry. So we are gonna do a background. Now, you can pick whatever color you wanna do. Um, I'm still not sure what color I wanna do. I think I'm just gonna dip into a bunch of colors and mix them, that's, that's my thing. Okay, but, this is gonna be the most fun. Let me see. For this background, what we're gonna do is we're gonna wet the paper first. So I'm gonna take some of my clean-ish water and I wanna get the entire background wet. Now I have a round size four brush and I'm gonna go right up to these petals and try and just get 
the background thoroughly saturated. So once you get that coated, a lot of times I'll like turn the paper to see, I missed some spots, <laughs> just to see if we got everything, especially like around the flower. Try to get it up as close as we can. And if you accidentally overlap some of the petals, don't worry, it won't be the end of the world. So, all right, so I have water all over the background. Okay, so now I'm gonna go into, I'm gonna start with this shade right here. This is Green Appetite Genuine, I think, from Daniel Smith. I'm gonna get, mix a little bit of that blue in there. And I'm just gonna take this color and mm, it just, it's so much fun. I'm just gonna start scribbling color in the background. Kind of blending it out. And then I'm gonna get a little bit darker of a green. Kind of blend that in with it. This is where you can kind of just zone out and completely just chill. I'm just taking those two colors and going back and forth. You can do as many colors as you want. I thought about adding purple, but I think I'm gonna stick with the green. Okay, so here is the final painting. I'll put it on the screen. So I hope that you got some helpful tips as to how to relax 
while painting with watercolor and maybe you did a beautiful painting in the process. Um, and if it's not perfect, that's okay. I don't think mine was perfect. I may actually do another variation of this when I don't have a camera in front of me. And if I do, I'll put that on the screen too. I kind of want purple around that flower. So I may do this again, just as a relaxing exercise. But again, at the beginning of this video, even I was like a little stressed. Yesterday was horrible. And after sitting down and painting, I just feel so much better. So I hope that this has been kind of um, therapeutic for you. I hope that you enjoyed this. And I hope that going forward, you'll remember to relax while you're painting. It's just paper, it's just paint. Try it again, don't get frustrated. But I think that's gonna be it for this video. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps our channel out. And if you haven't already and you wanna see those future videos, hit that subscribe button down below and we will see you guys next time. Bye. But I think that is it for this video. I don't remember how to exit. Kylie, hurry up and get back on the channel. I promise I still have a sister. She will be coming and reviewing markers soon. So come back if you wanna see some marker reviews. This is fun. Okay, camera, I need you to turn. Can you, can you just turn down right here? I need this to be up. The microphone is so far away. I hope it's picking me up. Um, this is on my desk, I don't know why. Okay, I do know why, because I color corrected the Okay, all right, number one, you need, hold on, how do I wanna phrase this?